Hi there, Rod Curry here. I've been doing this for a few months now and when I first started it was a kind of um, a hesitant way. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to carry on with this or not. And of course the nature of the films I was making was quite, um, let's call it clunky. Uh, but some of the first things I bought was four uh, British bikes from a guy that I, that I knew locally. So uh, I've been questioning several times about what happened to these bikes. And um, I did make a film of it but I didn't feel it was one of the best, so I kind of kept it back. But I've had some emails recently and people saying, what happened about the Norton? What happened about the Norton? So uh, I'm going to show you this film now. Please forgive the kind of clunky nature of it, the portrait shooting, the hesitancy and this kind of stuff. It's uh, This is all a learning curve when you start to do this thing. So I'll play the film now. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you do, please forgive the many mistakes. While I'm on now, I'm sitting on the Kawasaki that we did up a few weeks ago and my um, the, the chap that does my wheel building didn't have the time to do them. However, he was going on holiday this week and he risked the wrath of his wife uh, and worked nights and built the two wheel, built the wheels up for me and they look fantastic so I'll show them to you now. Yeah, there, the photos look great. They were quite sad before. The, um, the spokes were very, very rusty and tarnished and wouldn't come back. The rims were great, of course, as I mentioned before, the Tagasaco rims, which are absolutely outstanding, but the spokes were quite poor, so they look great now, don't they? I'll just show you the back one as well. So, they look absolutely fantastic, and it just puts the bike into a, into a different class, and uh, you could take it anywhere now and be proud of it, so I'm really, really pleased with that. So, thanks to Pete for his effort there. Isn't she sweet? Thanks, guys. It's from about 1958. It's not run since 1986, at the earliest. But um, as you can see, everything is there. I'll just have a walk around the bike and let you have a look. Oops, let me just take a, a wee bit of further look back. There we are. And I'm about to take it home now and um, just see if there's anything, anything missing. You can see uh, the bag's there. All the bits are there. Um, the great thing is, it seems to be in, in, in very good fettle for a, what we, we call a barn find. Um, the engine's free, which is a surprise. There was another one as well, an AJS, which isn't free. But um, let me take this home now and, uh, and I'll decide what I'm going to do with them. And if we restore them as we go forward, I'll start posting some pictures on the web and you can see these. So I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. And uh, this is going to be the first of many of these type vlogs, so look forward to seeing you. I've just collected the last of these little bikes and I'm going to show it to you now. It's a Greaves, which was a little enduro bike from the early 60s in Britain. Um, they were usually fitted with a Villiers 250 engine, but as, as time went on they started to fit uh, just different lumps. They put a Tiger 90 in at one point, the Tiger 90 engine. This one seems to have a little BSA 250 engine, whether or not that makes it what we call in Britain a Bitsa, I really don't know. Uh, but let's have a look at it now and I'll just show you. Okay, that's it there. You can see it's covered in dust, it's uh, been in that same place since 1986, it hasn't run. The engine's free. Um, and it's got this strange uh, fork arrangement here which is called a leading link and it was peculiar to the greaves at the time. Um, everything else seems pretty standard, they have the, the exhaust tucked away in a nice little place there by, in the frame because it was a trials bike. Um, I'm going to get off the trailer now and uh, we'll just have a good look at it and see what I'm going to do with it. It may be that I don't keep it at all and just move it on. but. Uh, that's the last of the four. I'm going to get the um, Norton out later. That was an ES2 from 1954, having looked at the um, the, the Norton records last night. So it's a, a good, a nice surprise. I thought it was an M50, which is a 350 from about 1958 or 9. But the ES2 was made from 1929 till about 1962. Um, and it's just a much more desirable bike. So I've won a coconut on that front. So nice to win one now and again, isn't it? I'll speak to you all later. Bye. <music> Hi there, you remember a few days ago we bought the Norton and the AGS and I got these bikes home and started to have a look at them and the AGS is a 1954 ES2 which is quite a nice bike and um, quite desirable. So I won a coconut there which is, as I've said before, very nice. You get your ass kicked off in and off so it's nice to win one. 
Um, I got it back here and there was no spark. Now, never having worked on a bike with a mag before, I was a wee bit um, out of my comfort zone, so my cousin Mark uh, came along and he's a real British bike aficionado and we had a wee tinker on Saturday afternoon, it is now Monday, and we had a wee tinker Saturday afternoon and cleaned the points up and lo and behold, no spark. So um, I'm going to show you the carburetor and things in a moment. And the carburetor hasn't been touched since 1986. The bike has never smelled unleaded. So um, I was very, very concerned. No, I wasn't concerned. It was, I didn't think it was going to start. Anyway, we primed, we filled the, the, put some fuel in the tank, primed the carb with a little tickler, I'll point out to you in a minute, which floods the carb. And I promise you, it started second kick after 34 years. Now I'm the first to criticise British bikes. Had that been a Japanese bike, and that's what I would spend most of my time working on, had it been a Japanese bike, um, I'm absolutely sure I'd have been having the carbs in bits, new needle valves, probably in my sonic cleaner. Um, I had put them back on the bike, I would have had to um, back in gauges just to get the fueling something like right. This thing started up and it ran and within a minute or two it would sit and idle. Uh, we had to do one or two things first, like you know the the, um, the sump was full of oil of course because it's drained in there across the last 34 years. So uh, in the ability, we couldn't get the sump plug out to drain the oil out so we just kicked it over for a few minutes with the plug out just to pump the oil back out of the um, sump and into the little tank at the side. Um, but it started up as sweet as you like, it was unbelievable. Um, so that's one in the eye for me and my criticism of, of all British bikes. So uh, maybe I've been wrong some of the time. So what I've done now, I've wheeled the bike out, I'm going to let you have a look at it, and I'm going to try and start it for you. Now I'm not good at this, uh, never having tinkered with the advanced retard and all this nonsense before, but Cousin Mark, God bless him, has showed me how to do it. I'm going to see if I can kick this up for you now and you can listen to it run. So that'd be really good. So I'm going to see if I can stand this telephone up somewhere, and uh, let's see if it can see the bike and see me fanning about. What I've done, I've put, um, I've got the plug out just now, and I'm going to put a little bit of petrol in the cylinder just to give it a little bit of flavour, just give it a sniff and that might just help it away and I'll start pulling fuel through the carburetor. So wish me luck guys and let's see if we can make it go. If you can see that, okay there we have it. Right. back in now. Yeah, that's got the plug cap back on. Well, let's see if it'll do the do. And as this thing kicks me up in there, this thing kicks me up in there. I'm doing this for your entertainment. So I'm, I've retarded the, the timing. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with the choke. So you take it to top dead centre. That's it there now. And it's just gone over it. So let's try it. idle yet? No, not quite. I'm going to try to see if I can kick it up again. I was going to make an arse of me now, of course. But what about that? It's 34 years since it ran. It started on Saturday. Actually better than it's just started just now. Um, and it's absolutely astonishing. 
have to switch the fuel off because I'll show you the carburetor. Those engineers amongst you will tell, switch on, push on, turn it off, okay. Well, that's on. You can see it's leaking like mad there just now. Um, but you can see nothing's been disturbed at all. Um, all I've done is given this a clean round. And the wheels are starting to come up really very nicely. As the front, I've just started doing the front wheel around the edges. And for a 34 year old bike, it is absolutely astonishing the condition it's in. Uh, I'll just try it again with a bit of choke. I don't know if I'll start with a bit of choke or not. No, it's not going to play, but you've heard it run now. Um, I'm just so delighted. And you'll not be seeing it anymore because later that day, my cousin Mark, who was very, he was ecstatic that it had run, um, he phoned me up and says, what do, you want, what do you want for that bike, Rod? I said, well, I don't know, you're my cousin, and you know, if I sell it to you too cheap, I'm going to feel like a fool. If I sell it to you for what it's worth, I'm going to feel like a, like a dog. To cut a long story short, I bought it very well. So my view is, if you have good luck, you should share it. So I've let Mark have it at a very good price. And so I've made some money. He's got a great bike that he will adore forever. And he'll make this, he'll keep it as it is, but clean it up and make it very, very pretty indeed. So it's a win-win for all of us. Hope you enjoyed that. Apologies for the many mistakes. Thanks to Mark for coming along and helping me sort out the ES2 and getting it going. Uh, I think it was a great result for everyone. We'll be picking up the story of the CL350 across the next film. And uh, that's got even more interesting as we've gone along. So please have a look next time. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.